How do fragment shaders actually work? Well, if I had to summarize what a fragment shader does, it would be, tell me what color the pixel is. So the job of our fragment shader is to tell the GPU what color one pixel is. Not what color all the pixels are, just what color one pixel is. This is very important, guys. That means if we had one million pixels in our canvas, our code would run one million times, once per pixel. In the previous video, I told you that we could treat our canvas like a Cartesian plane, an X and Y coordinate system. So let's say we had pixel 4, 3 right here. And right above it, we had pixel 4, 4. Now, because of the way your GPU works, these pixels look side by side, and they are side by side, but pixel 43 has no idea that pixel 44 exists. Pixels are said to be blind to one another. This is part of the reason why our code gets run once per pixel and why graphics can be displayed on screen so quickly. What our GPU is not doing is it's not running our code on one pixel, waiting for the code to finish, then moving on to the next pixel, waiting for the code to finish, then moving on and so on and so forth. What our code is doing is it's running simultaneously on every single pixel. This is what we call parallel processing. And it's probably the major reason why fragment shader programming can be so difficult. We have one piece of code running per pixel, and no pixels have any idea that any other pixel exists. So how do we get different pixels to display different colors if they're all running the exact same piece of code? Well, if you're coming from a programming background, you might think of something like a if-else conditional, some sort of logical conditional statement, something like that right here. So just uh, real quickly, a uh, refresher. The first three lines establish a default precision level for our floating point numbers. This is basically how accurate our colors are going to be. The line five is a new line. We'll discuss that in a second. We have our main function that returns a void and we are setting our global frag color to a vector of four elements, which is R, G, B, and A. Red, green, blue, and alpha, the color of the pixel. And so all this code is meant to do, it's meant to highlight that every pixel in this canvas is running this piece of code. And any pixel that falls between this range here, this 0 0.500 to 0 0.503, gets turned white, and the rest of the pixels get turned black. This type of coding, however, is pretty costly to a GPU because of how a GPU is set up. A GPU is not set up to do if-else conditionals like this. It's set up specifically to do mathematical operations very quickly. If it was set up to do if-else conditionals like this, it'd be a CPU, not a GPU. So for that reason, we try and avoid this sort of if-else stuff when we're trying to determine the, uh, the color of a few pixels. Instead, what we do is we have to be very clever about the the, the math we use to draw patterns of colors on screen. And conveniently, because we can treat our canvas like a Cartesian plane in X and Y coordinate system, we can use the tools of Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 and Linear Algebra to accomplish drawing patterns or making different pixels of different colors on screen. Something like this. So don't worry too much about how the code works. It's just meant to illustrate that we're using a linear function to draw white to red. So we start on the left, we get white, and we slowly increase or introduce red. We get the pink, and then on the far right, we get the red. Again, this was accomplished using a mathematical function to turn different pixels, different colors, instead of us just having a bunch of if, else, if, else, if, else conditionals in our, uh, in our code. With all this said, remember, no matter how complicated our fragment shader code might get, it's only ever answering the question, what color is this single pixel that I'm running on. That's it. Now let's go back to that variable I skipped over. This U resolution. What is U resolution? In the previous video I told you that the vertex shader gave us a few things. It gave us this canvas as well as some global and constant variables. It gave us the global variable frag color which we use to tell the GPU what color the pixel is. And now it's given us this U resolution and this GL frag cord. So what is U-resolution? What is GL-frag cord? Well, U-resolution is the resolution of our canvas here, the width and the height in pixels. GL-frag cord is the X, Y, and Z coordinates of our pixel on our monitor's resolution, not our canvas's resolution. So what does that mean? This brings us to the very important topic of normalizing. 
why are we dividing the coordinate of the pixel on our monitor's resolution by the resolution of the canvas on our monitor? We're going to tackle that question, that very important question, in the next video. So what did we learn in this video? We learned how a fragment shader works. Our shader's only job is to tell the GPU what color a single pixel is because pixels are blind to one another. Our shader runs once per pixel. And since it's run once per pixel and we only get to run one piece of code, we have to be clever about the math we use to render different pixels different colors. We also introduced this new variable U resolution, which is the resolution of our canvas, and another global variable frag chord, which is the position of the pixel on our monitor's resolution that is currently running the shader. In the next video, we'll discuss the concept of normalizing, which is a specific type of process I like to refer to as keeping track of your range. It's probably going to be the most important topic of this beginner series. If you can wrap your head around what the next video is going to be about, I promise you fragment shader programming becomes much, much easier. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe, thumbs up, whichever platform you're watching this on, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys in the next one.